are going to talk about my favorite JavaScript library, and I think a lot of people's favorite JavaScript library. React tops the charts in most popular library, most used, and I think there's a good reason for it. So if you're looking for a job or if you're looking to get into web development, React is one of the tools that you're pretty much going to work with, or if you're not working with it directly, somebody will be working with it that you are gonna come in contact with. So this is meant to get you up and running with React, get you uh, into modern React, and get you knowing all about the ins and outs of why you would use such a cool library. So React is what so many of the modern websites that you'll see are built with. So the reasons for it is it's declarative, which basically means that it is going to be really easy to understand your code, to write your code, and to jump into somebody else's, like a team's code, and know what's going on. It is component-based, which lets you compartmentalize parts of your application into components. If you look at this site specifically, the top, the header is gonna be a component. This hero section could be a component. Each of these nav items could be a component. And this is really nice because if you bring people onto your team, you can say, hey, just work on this one component. You don't have to mess around with the rest of the application and everything is compartmentalized. So there are a lot of really good reasons to use React, and we're gonna get a lot into those in this video. So to start us off, I wanna talk about how you can use React. And React, you can use as adding on top of an existing application, or you can use React as the entire application, and we call that a single page app. Let me show you what adding React to an existing application <laughs> looks like, and I'm gonna go into CodePen, CodePen.io, and CodePen is basically a learning tool, a playground online where you can create a new pen, and now you can work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all inside of your browser. This is a great way to learn React, to play around with React. But before we jump directly into React, we're gonna talk a little bit about JavaScript. And I think it's important to talk about JavaScript, specifically vanilla JavaScript, so just JavaScript by itself, no libraries, if you wanna talk about the benefits of React. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to have some HTML and some JavaScript. No CSS needed for this demo. I'm going to create a div and we're gonna call it ID is going to be message. And what I have here is just a div. If you talk about modern JavaScript applications, it's a lot of the same stuff. It's going to get data from somewhere. Let's say you go get it from a database you get it from a backend API, you get it from, you create it yourself, and then you're going to inject it into the browser to show your user. So let's say I had const message is equal to, hi there, welcome. So that's some JavaScript. I want to inject that into this area right here. Let's say I got this from a database. For this demo, I'm just going to just write it out. We're gonna say document dot get element by ID message, and we're gonna say inner text is equal to message. So we're going to affect that div right there, and we're gonna pass that message in to the inner text property of that div. Okay, so that's easy enough. What if we had a button right here? Because usually in JavaScript land, in modern web app land, you're going to display data, you're going to listen for a user event, whether that be a button click, Maybe they navigate different pages. Maybe they fill out a form, but you're gonna listen for user events and then you are going to update your information and then update the browser for that new information. So we're gonna say update message right here. And you know what? Let's make this a little bit easier to read. Const message div is equal to, we'll move this right here right there, and then we're gonna say message div. And we have our message, and then we also are going to need our button, so we're gonna say const button is equal to document dot query selector button. And already I'm writing so much that I don't wanna write. This is, I'll show you why this is gonna be problematic once you scale your applications. Inner text is equal to message, and then we're gonna say button dot add event listener, click, and we're gonna listen for this click event, and then we're going to update message div dot inner text is equal to I am a new message. 
Okay, so as soon as I click update message, we should see this update. And it didn't, I already broke my code. <laughs> let's see what's going on here. Button dot add event listener click. Let's see, document dot query selector. Oh, that should be button. Golly, already messing up my JavaScript. So I'll click update message and there we go, it works. So that is fine and dandy. That's not the worst code. It is still easy to read, but React is even easier to read. And let me show you where this breaks down. Let's copy this. Let's say I had multiple areas where I wanted to do the same thing. I would need to name this message two, message three, and then all of this would have to get duplicated like that. But then we would need a class on each button. So this would be like class is update message one. This would be class update message two. And you can see how this starts to break down and get really hard to read. If I brought somebody into the team and said, hey, welcome to this project, go ahead and learn some code, this wouldn't be very easy to read. What we're gonna do is we're going to bring in React. And I'm gonna show you how this works in React and why that scalability problem goes away with React. And the readability problem, actually. So to get started with React, we are going to need to get the JavaScript libraries for React. So I'm gonna go into my JavaScript panel. I'm gonna go into settings. To work with React in CodePen, we are going to need to bring in a tool called Babel. And Babel basically takes all of the React code and spits it out into a version that each browser can understand. And this is mostly for JSX, which is React's templating language. And we'll talk about that in this video. So I'm gonna set this to Babel. And then down here, we are going to add React. And I'm gonna add this one right here, React. And then we're gonna add another one for React DOM. And DOM is going to be the browser library needed to work with React. So this is what React uses to inject data into the browser. And the reason they separated the two libraries is because the React DOM one can be removed. Maybe you're using React for mobile apps. Maybe you're using React for, I don't know, server side stuff. So let's click save. All right, so now I'm going to div ID and we're just gonna call this root. Really, you could call this anything you want. I see some people call this app. We'll stick with root. And in our JavaScript, let's build our first React application. And let me show you what a React component looks like. Function, my message. You could call that message as well, whatever you want. And now we have a React component. And the cool thing I like about React is that a React component is just a JavaScript function. So to learn React, I believe, makes you a better JavaScript developer as a whole. So let's do what we did in the previous demo. We had const message is equal to I am learning React. And then down here, I'm going to return. And this is how we're going to tell React to inject our template. So right here, we just had div and we're gonna say react, inject everything into the inside of that div. So we're gonna say return, let's say div. And the way that we can get React to spit out a variable is to use little brackets like this, message. So curly opening bracket, curly closing bracket. And that is uh, React's way of saying, okay, I'm going to inject an actual JavaScript variable. So anything inside of these brackets, React will say, okay, let's read it as JavaScript. So you could even do two plus one and React would spit out three. So let's get back here, message. All right, so nothing's really happened yet. We've generated our React component, but we haven't t said React, inject this into our browser. So to do that, we are going to use that React DOM library. We're gonna say React DOM dot render, and this is gonna be in two parts. One is what we want to render. So let's say uh, div I am info. And the second part is where you want this to render. So I'm gonna split this out into multiple lines like this. And we're gonna say document dot get element by ID. And it's gonna be root. Okay, so now that is able to say React, spit that out into this div ID, and you are going to now be working only in JavaScript.
similar to what we did earlier, but everything is in the JavaScript and it is a little bit easier to read. We have our component, which is a React component, just a JavaScript function. At the top is where you're usually gonna have your variables. And then down here is gonna be your template where you actually inject into the DOM. And this, you only have to usually write one time if you're working with React because you just wanna inject everything into that one root div and then everything else can be built in React land. So you might be wondering, Chris, we didn't actually use this message that we just created. I can go down here. And every time you create a React component, you can now use it in React as if it were an HTML element. So message like that. There we go. And now I am learning React, which is this message that is this message right here gets injected here. And let me show you the cool thing about this is we can actually implement this multiple times because we now have a reusable React component. I can actually just do this a few times. And there we go. We didn't have to do a new get element by ID or anything like that. React knows how to inject that into our DOM. You can even simplify this to a self-closing tag like that, and it still works. All right, so the last part of this video, the last part of our intro to React, we've done React components. We've seen how it can be a little bit better than the JavaScript side of things. We've seen how to inject data, and we've seen how to render our React application. Next up is handling that button click that we saw earlier. So I'm gonna have this div here, and we are gonna say button, update, message. So to do this, I wanna show you what handling an event looks like in React. We're gonna say on click. This is how you add event listener in React. So you don't have to go button dot add event listener anymore. You don't have to go and get this by doing a document query selector. React knows how to wire up an event listener just by adding it directly to the element itself. So right here, let's do a function. We'll do an arrow function and I'll just say alert, hey, so as soon as I click this, we get an alert that says, hey, click that, alert says, hey, and the other one works as well. So all three work just by adding it. And since we're rendering the three components at the same time, it's gonna work again. All right, so the last part to this is updating our message so that we can update the message in our DOM, in our HTML. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna go back to one message we have to bring in a concept that React calls state. So React will let us update variables and then React will go ahead and say, don't worry about it. I will go ahead and update what our view looks like. And for React to do that, it can't just do it in a normal variable. We have to call out a new thing called state. So I'm gonna write the syntax message, set message is equal to state, and it's gonna be empty to start. Actually, I'm gonna put this message in here to start. So this use state tool is going to tell React, hey, I'm gonna give you a message variable and I want a set message function. So anytime I update the variable using set message, then go ahead and update our template. So go ahead and re-inject that into the template. So you'll never see in React where we have to manually go and input data. We don't ever have to do something like this, document.getElementById, blah, dot inner text, or inner HTML. We'll never have to do those two things because React handles that in the backend. And this is a lot of what React is gonna save us from writing is that injection, that specific DOM manipulation. All we have to do in React is update our variable and React will go ahead and update our view. So instead of alert, I'm gonna say set message, my new message. And let me split this out so it's a little easier to read like that. So if I click this update message, it should update to my new message. And look how quick that was for the update to happen. We were able to store something in state we're able to show it and then we're able to update it using an event listener. And it still works for multiple down the road. So we can even have that many. 
and each one would update by itself as we click these buttons. So you can see how React makes it really nice to scale up into a larger application without having to write extra code. All right, so we've done a lot in this video. We were able to see some JavaScript. We were able to do the same exact thing in React and see how much easier it is to read, especially if you introduce this to another team member or another developer, you can say, hey, this is a React component. They'll say, okay, this is where my variables live and this is where my template lives. And I'll check down here for any event listeners. And that's JavaScript application. So I hope this was helpful. This is a great start into React. I hope you enjoyed this video.